Okay, so for today's story, we're going to read The Tale of Peter Rabbit by Beatrix Potter. So remember, open your eyes and turn on your ears. And here we go. Once upon a time, there were four little rabbits and their names were Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. They lived with their mother in a sandbank underneath the root of a very big fir tree. Here they are. Now, my dears, said old Mrs. Rabbit one morning, you may go into the fields or down the lane, but don't go into Mr. McGregor's garden. Your father had an accident there. He was put in a pie by Mrs. McGregor. Now run along and don't get into mischief. I am going out. Now she's telling her children that they can go and play, but to be safe. Then old Mrs. Rabbit took a basket and her umbrella and went through the wood to the baker's. She bought a loaf of brown bread and five currant buns. There she is, all dressed up to go to the market. Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail, who were good little bunnies, went down the lane to gather blackberries. But Peter, who was very naughty, ran straight away to Mr. McGregor's garden and squeezed under the gate. Look at how naughty he is. First he ate some lettuces and some French beans, and then he ate some radishes. And then, feeling rather sick, he went to look for some parsley. Look at his little tummy's bothering him. But round the end of a cucumber frame, whom should he meet but Mr. McGregor? Mr. McGregor was on his hands and knees planting out young cabbages. But he jumped up and ran after Peter, waving a rake and calling out, Stop! Thief! Oh my gosh! Look at he's chasing him! Peter was most dreadfully frightened. He rushed all over the garden, for he had forgotten the way back to the gate. He lost one of his shoes among the cabbages and the other shoe amongst the potatoes. Oh, look at his little shoe! After losing them, he ran on four legs and went faster, so that I think he might have got away altogether if he had not unfortunately run into a gooseberry net and got caught by the large buttons on his jacket. It was a blue jacket with brass buttons, quite new. Look at poor Re Peter, he's stuck. His little buttons got stuck on the netting. Peter gave himself up for lost and shed big tears, but his sobs were overheard by some friendly sparrows who flew to him in great excitement and implored him to exert himself. Mr. McGregor came up with a seed, which he intended to pop upon the top of Peter, but Peter wiggled out just in time, leaving his jacket behind him. There he is, barely getting away from Mr. McGregor. And he rushed into the tool shed and jumped into a can. It would have been a beautiful thing to hide in if it had not had so much water in it. Mr. McGregor was quite sure that Peter was somewhere in the tool shed, perhaps hidden underneath the flower pot. He began to turn them over carefully, looking under each. There he is jumping into the watering can. Presently, Peter sneezed. Kishoo! Mr. McGregor was after him in no time and tried to put his foot upon Peter, who jumped out of a window, upsetting three plants. The window was too small for Mr. McGregor, and he was tired of running after Peter. He went back to his work. Look at him. There he is, jumping out the window. Look how close Mr. McGregor's shoe is, and he's knocking the plants over. Peter sat down to rest. He was out of breath and trembling with fright, and he had not the least idea which way to go. Also, he was very damp with sitting in that can. After a time, he began to wander about, going lippity-lippity, not very fast, and looking all around. So there he is, catching his breath, sitting still in the garden.
He found a door in a wall, but it was locked and there was no room for a fat little rabbit to squeeze underneath. An old mouse was running in and out over the stone doorstep, carrying peas and beans to her family in the wood. Peter asked her the way to the gate, but she had such a large pea in her mouth that she could not answer. She only shook her head at him and Peter began to cry. Oh, poor Peter. Then he tried to find his way straight across the garden, but he came more and more puzzled. Presently, he came to a pond where Mr. McGregor filled his water cans. A white cat was staring at some goldfish. She sat very, very still, but now and then the tip of her tail twitched as if it were alive. Peter thought it best to go away without speaking to her. He had heard about cats from his cousin, little Benjamin Bunny. See the pretty kitty watching the fish? And there's Peter. <clears throat> he went back towards the tool shed, but suddenly quite close to him, he heard the noise of a, noise of a hoe. Scritch, scratch, scratch, scritch. Peter scuttered underneath the bushes, but presently as nothing happened, he came out and climbed upon a wheelbarrow and peeped over. The first thing he saw was Mr. McGregor hoeing onions. His back was turned towards Peter, and beyond him was the gate. So there's Peter in the wheelbarrow. There's Mr. McGregor working with his back to him. And way over here's the gate. Peter got down very quietly off the wheelbarrow and started running as fast as he could go along a straight walk behind some black currant bushes. Mr. McGregor caught sight of him at the corner, but Peter did not care. He slipped underneath the gate and was safe at last in the wood outside the garden. There he is, almost to the gate, and look, Mr. McGregor saw him. <coughs> Mr. McGregor hung up the little jacket and the shoes for a scarecrow to frighten the blackbirds. Peter never stopped running or looked behind him till he got home to the big fir tree. Look, there's his little blue coat with the brass buttons and two little shoes made a tiny little scarecrow. He was so tired that he flopped down upon the nice soft sand on the floor of the rabbit hole and shut his eyes. His mother was busy cooking. She wondered what he had done with his clothes. It was the second little jacket and pair of shoes that Peter had lost in a fortnight. I am sorry to say that Peter was not very well during the evening. Look at Peter, he's exhausted. He's all stretched out. The mother's looking at him going, hmm. His mother put him to bed and made some chamomile tea and she gave a dose of it to Peter. One tablespoon to be taken at bedtime. But Flopsy, Mopsy and Cottontail had bread and milk and blackberries for supper. The end. So there's his sisters, the good little bunnies. They're getting a nice yummy dinner. And Peter was put to bed with chamomile tea. Thank you for listening to the tale of Peter Rabbit by Beatrix Potter. Okay, so for today's art, we're going to be making our own Peter Rabbit. So you should have a little white cutout of Peter Rabbit. And then I'm looking at the book and Peter Rabbit is actually a tan bunny. So to get tan, I have brown paint and white paint, and I'm gonna mix them together. And then I also wanna leave a little bit of the white paint just to do some detail. And then you should have some blue tissue paper for his coat. So I'm gonna put this right here. And then I'm gonna um, pour out some glue too, because we'll need the glue for his coat. <clears throat> So I have a paintbrush and I'm just going to mix a little bit of paint together to make my can. And I'll leave that there. And we're going to use cotton balls because they're fun and they'll add some texture. And I'm just going to pinch it and this part's going to be my paintbrush. I'm going to dip it into the paint and then I'm going to plop it all over my bunny. And 
And just like I always say, you're gonna get a little bit messy and that's okay. It's just paint and it washes right up. And using a cotton ball, I thought it would be fun to paint with it, but it also makes Peter look a little bit like he has fur. Because that's what bunnies' bodies are covered in, they're covered in fur. So now I'm gonna take another cotton ball and I'm gonna dip it in the white. I'm just gonna try and add some white belly because his tummy's white and some white for his tail and maybe just a little under his chin. Okay, so then there's our bunny with the cotton ball paint brown and then a little bit of white, a little bit of white and a little bit of white. Now I'm gonna take my glue and my tissue paper and I'm gonna add the glue to the brown paint and I'm just gonna dab it on on where his little blue coat would be. And it was just on the side of his body because he's a fat little rabbit and the coat wasn't completely closed. It was just on the edges. And then I have my blue tissue paper and just like always, one at a time. And you can make your coat as big or as small as you want. And I'm just gonna add the blue tissue paper and there's his coat. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of the glue and the same cotton ball that I had the white. Whoops. I'm gonna dab some glue. And I'm just gonna brush over the tissue paper to smooth it down. And then we're gonna let Peter dry. And then when he's dry, we can have mom or dad or grandma or grandma or big sister or brother help trim off the rest of the tissue paper. And then you can add details when he's dry. You can give Peter his eyes, his little nose and some whiskers because he is a rabbit. Because that's what I did with yesterday's art. Here's Mr. Jeremy Fisher. I poked out where his eyes were. I trimmed off all the green that was hanging over from the tissue paper and I added a big smile because he was having so much fun fishing. So that's today's art. We'll let this dry. We'll trim him up and I'll show you what he looks like tomorrow when we see each other again. Bye-bye. Okay, so now we're going to garden. I have three different types of herbs and I have um, this pot. Some people call it a strawberry pot, but we're gonna turn it into an herb pot. Um, we're going to plant these three herbs in the very top of it. I've already got um, some good potting soil in here. And we have spearmint. So I'm gonna take his tag out for now. And I'm gonna squish him so he comes out. Whoops. You have to work them a little bit. And then all of this are the plant's way of eating. They're called roots, and I have to open them up a little bit so that they're loose, and then they'll be able to dig down into the deeper soil. And I'm gonna put the spearmint right here. And then we have thyme. The same thing, I'm gonna kinda squish it give it a poke and get it to wiggle out. <laughs> this one's harder to wiggle out. Here it comes. All right. And then again, you're seeing the way it eats and drinks is the roots. Oh, and this one's tight. You're gonna have to kind of really work it loose break them up. When they're hard to come out of the pot and their roots are like this, it's because they've been in this little pot for a long time. I'm gonna squeeze the thyme in 
And the last herb is parsley. I'm gonna squeeze him out. Yeah, he came out a lot easier. A lot easier to see the roots. They're loose, they're nice. Whoops, and I'm gonna squish him in right here. And they're all in nice and tight. And then I'm gonna add some more soil to fill in the spaces. Oh, I can smell the spearmint already. It smells delicious. And I'm just gonna fill all the way around. I'm gonna just keep going. Filling in all the pockets. And then push in underneath. And then I'm going to keep these because sometimes I forget like how long they're supposed to grow when you get to pick them, or even sometimes I forget their names. So these are tags that have their names on them. Stick those right next to the plants and then they mark what type they are in case somebody asks me and I can't remember. And also has growing instructions. And remember, the last thing we need to do now is sing our song. So we sing, grow, 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 little plants grow, 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 little plants grow. That's it for today's gardening. See you soon.